Uh, everyone, this is uh, Juicy here coming back to you guys with another update. Um, this one is about the Rocket Pool Redstone update. If you guys um, don't know, um, I pretty much manage a uh, Red Pool Validator node, and um, the next upgrade is pretty big um, just because it provides a lot of, um, uh, I guess, quality of life improvements as well as it's the uh, preparation for the uh, proof of stake merge. Um, so it is highly suggested that everyone does it. Um, if you look at their Rocket Pool uh, release announcements, um, they actually tell node operators must upgrade to this version before August 29th. So right now it is, um, you know, the, the 28th. So you pretty much have until tomorrow. Um, I do highly recommend it. Um, also know that if you are, I guess, on the Practor Testnet, which is the beta testing for the merge, um, the stress set is uh, very high, right? So um, the Gorley and Practor merge is pretty much the, the test net for um, for the uh, proof of stake for Ethereum. So um, let's go into pretty much what it is, right? So um, they're prepping for the merge, right? Um, there's a few quality of life upgrades to um, to Rocket Pool node, calling it Redstone. Um, one of the things you actually have to do is um, you can add, I guess, the Rocket Pool node uh, initializing fee distributor. Um, there's also this new reward system. Um, claiming the uh, Rocket Pool rewards is actually a um, lot less now. Um, it's not going to be a certain amount of gas fees. Um, there's no penalties for um, having a less than 10% um, of collateral. Um, you know, and also like if you don't if you don't claim it within 28 days, it, like, it goes away. Like none of those things are going anymore. Smoothing pool is really cool. Um, smoothing pool um, pretty much allows for all the assertions. You can get those blockchain. Uh, you can get those block proposals, and those block proposals uh, essentially you help create the next chain within the Ethereum blockchain. And sometimes they're very random, especially within um, being a node uh, validator. So sometimes you'll just get one, uh, you know, once uh, a week or so, or even like once a month. Um, but those essentially give you more rewards because you actually helped create those um, those blocks within the Ethereum blockchain. Um, the smoothing tool pretty much you join a collective pool of bunch of people who want to be part of this and essentially um the rewards uh for um creating those uh blocks of the proposals are distributed evenly right so the more people it's more evenly distributed so i do recommend it um especially if you have like um you know some mini pools if you're like i don't know a whale and you you're managing a bunch um, it may, you may not be interested, right? But I mean, if you want to help out, I mean, please go ahead. It's really up to you. Um, penalty system, which is just talking about the penalty system. Um, but yeah, it looks like some people were cheating. I don't know why you would do that, but, um, let's talk about what you should do with the redstone update. Um, keep in mind that this is not an IT support. I am not IT support. I'm not here to help you guys. Um, upgrade your redstone i'm just trying to give you just guidance um, I, and i hope it's useful for you guys um first thing i do recommend you guys do is definitely listen to the rocket pool discord redstone ama um, i'll put a link to the description they're just going to go over everything it gets you a better understanding of you know the upgrade um the quality of life improvements and um you know what you need to do prior to the upgrade um of 1.5 and then after um, the upgrade as well. Um, do keep in mind that everything for the post upgrade of 1.5, um, such as the MEV, um, the fee distributions, um, the smoothing pool, joining of those, those are currently not available and implemented just because the emerge of uh, proof of stake isn't, um, you know, it hasn't happened yet, right? So just keep that in mind. So those are things you have to do afterwards. All right, so let's get into what you need to do, all right? So first thing, things you need to do before upgrading to 1.5. I'll put the link um, of what, I'm, what you're seeing um, in the descriptions, but first thing is switch to a full execution client. Now, what does that mean? Um, when you first installed, um, you know the ethereum client the execution client or even the um the consensus client um 
execution client means Ethereum 1, um, which could be like, I think it was like Infura, Pocket, um, Teku, Prism, or like Gef, I forget. But you need to upgrade pretty much um, or switch to a full execution client. Now, if you don't know um, what you installed, a good way to figure that out is to go back to whatever guide that you use to install um, Rocket Pool, right? Because those are the type of things you actually have to select. Um, an easy way is actually if you type in, uh, let me just exit out of this, right? And then you go to rock. If you type in rocket pool service config, you're going to be given this uh, nice UI that rocket pool has designed and you can check out your execution client and you can see right here, bam, I have GEF, right? If you go to my consensus client, bam, I have prism, right? And you can select these. So if you have, um, for your execution client, if you have Pocket or Infura, know that it is deprecated. Know that you should switch to a full client and you should install it. Now, I've already had GEF to begin with, so I'm not entirely sure uh, if there's any extra steps needed to do a full uh, installation of um, a new execution client. Um, Keep in mind also that the um, the light execution clients were used as the fallback when you do when you did have to prune your Ethereum Ethereum one especially. Um, so yeah, you just have to switch to a full execution client, right? So that's the first thing you need to do. Second is set up an API engine. Now, um, you know, please read all this. Um, they do mention that there is a gentleman named Cash Q. Uh, Coin Cashew, and he actually provides a good guidance on um, creating a, um, I guess, a validator node, but without Rocket Pool, but just if you want to just be a validator node for the Ethereum network, right? Um, this is the link of what this one recommends a great consensus guide when merged, Panda, um, and pretty much just follow this to the T, understand what you're doing. First things first, update your execution layer as well as your consensus layer, which is pretty much what I was mentioning. Ethereum 1, uh, Ethereum 2, the clients. Now, if you don't know how to update that, uh, what's amazing about this gentleman is he's very thorough and he provides you with those guides. So uh, look into this. But yeah, first update your system, right? Just copy and paste. Copy and paste this. If it's, if it's asking for a yes or no, um, shouldn't be the case just because you already have it in the pretext of the syntax, it'll upgrade. So let that run. It should be good. Now, if you're looking to update your uh, execution layer and consensus layer, this is where you look it up. Um, keep in mind, though, that, you know, we are using Rocket Pool for all this, right? So some of the stuff isn't there. Um, from when I was doing the upgrade, um, me updating my execution layer and my consensus layer, um, when I was following these links, um, it didn't work and I was scratching my head. Why is that? It's because, uh, if I do system control and I stop Ethereum one, that doesn't exist because I am leveraging rocket pool uh, and rocket pool has, uh, is managing all that because I selected, you know, GEF, right? Um, so this is like coin cashews methodology or, uh, instructions, or if you, actually created a validator node uh, on the uh, Ethereum uh, proof of stake layer, Ethereum 2, um, without using Rocket Pool, right? So just keep that in mind. If you like, if you're scratching your head, like, oh, why can't I update it, right? So um, just know, just know that, right? So you're still here, right? Um, switch to a full uh, execution client, right? So you're here, you update, right? your system, and then you do this, uh, create a J, uh, JWT secret file. So um, I highly recommend just take this, um, manually copy it, and then in your terminal, just, you know, copy and paste it, whether that's right click, or if, you, if you're able to do, um, you know, command V or, um, you know, control V, whatever it is. Um, and yeah, 
don't worry about these. Um, these are just giving you comments on top of what exactly it that the command is doing. So it definitely, it definitely helps you understand what is being done, right? After that, you update the startup commands. Um, so you know, uh, so that just such a fee recipient address enable the authenticated ports to the new engine API. Um, so yeah, let's go into it. So first things first, it's telling you to add and append changes to end of the execution start line, control O, um, control X to save and exit. So what it's telling you to do is to create these files uh, within the, these respective locations, right? Um, because these are going to be the startup commands that are needed for um, the consensus layer, execution layer. So it's pretty much connecting everything when the merge happens. So you're previously creating a file. You're creating this file as well. So you're creating all these three files, right? And then after you create those files, um, if you need to correlate or connect the dots, consensus client, consensus client layer change. So what he's telling you is for you to, once you open up this, right? You can do uh, control O, which pretty much means write out. Um, and then you can do control X, which means you save it. Um, you can reopen it again using this exact same command, right? And then you can just, uh, depending on which consensus layer, and this is important, right? You need to know which consensus layer that you have chosen. For example, uh, for the consensus layer, that is the Ethereum 2. So back in here, what is my consensus layer? All right, that is here, right? I have Prism. Cool. So I click here, I go to Prism, I copy this. Now I, they tell you to make sure that you change the um, OX.00, pretty much this address, to um, an Ethereum address that you control. So um, whatever, I guess, address that you are using uh, for claiming the RPL tokens, um, or if you prefer to just use a different um, address, you can use that. So I do recommend you just copy this, open up like a notepad plus plus sublime, some sort of text editor where you're able to um, copy it over, go to your wallet address, copy it and just replace this right there. And you're pretty much done. Uh, and that's for Prism. So make sure you look at these and you make sure you, uh, you know, um, copy it appropriately based on the consensus client. Uh, validated client, it's the same thing. Just make sure what you know. So if, since I'm in Prism, you Prism, uh, copy this, change the address as well. For the execution client, which I know I have GEF, right? I would just copy this over. Um, and since I don't, since there's no like um, customized with like a withdrawal address, I will just copy this over and paste it. So remember, execution client layer changes essentially is this, right? So I'm just copying this again, invoking the commands, pasting, right, this, and it should be done. Now, afterwards, um, you can type this one or copy it. It will work. Now, I believe when I copied this one asking to restart it didn't work why because this ethereum one um of the system controller doesn't exist right this is for people who are manually um you know starting up their own uh node validators and then you know with ethereum but not through rocket pool so just i'm just trying to close out because these are the type of things that i was facing and i was having some issues um with that so now we're pretty much done um, now this is optional stuff, um, but I do highly recommend that once you have set up the engine API, um, you should check to see if your validator client is still up and running, right? And now how to check that? Um, they do recommend that you can check, you know, uh, through like Grafana. If you have Grafana, um, you can check with the beacon chain. So you just um, click here, go to there. Now, from my understanding, when I put in my um, I guess you can say like my node address, it only show like my mini pools. Um, but there is a chart up top where it shows all the asset stations. Um, so if you see activity there, but it's really hard to see my best advice to you would be just go to your Grafana 
if you go to your Grafana, you'll see um, the attestations. Now, if you did it correct, um, because you would first have to, um, you know, stop your rocket pool um, after you do like, it's like after you do all the, um, after you do the setup the engine, right? And you do all this and you do the daemon reload. Um, that is when you actually perform the upgrade, right? And then performing the upgrade is what you typically do. Um, so depending on what it is, whether it's Docker, uh, Docker hybrid, a Linux, or I guess Mac OS, uh, whatever you decide to do, that's how you do it. Um, so it's really up to you how you did it. So yeah, so first you need to do is actually uh, stop the services rocket pool. Once you do that, you know, you copy the appropriate ones. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I am assuming and pretty positive you guys already know how to do this. This is pretty much like something you have to do, you know, every single time. So I'm not going to go too much deep into that. But once you, uh, once you do upgrade it, you start the service, you check to see uh, which version it is. It should say 1.5.0. One, one uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, and then um, I'm pretty sure you guys are aware once you stop it, restart it, you know, your ad cessations pretty much goes back to zero. Now, this might be a little bit concerning because, for example, for me, I had no ad cessations and I was like, oh my God, like, is it actually going? Is it working? Um, you just have to see, you know, um, the next ad cessations. If the numbers go up, you're pretty much good. Uh, you're in a good state. Um, one of the things that I recommend that you do to check is this um i just looked at the logs so if you go into um right here you go into rocket pool service logs and i do recommend you just check out your validator um ethereum ethereum one you can just type in this and you just give you a full um full um live real time of your assistations now that's pretty much it after that, you're pretty much set and done. Um, just know that afterwards, uh, once the merge does happen, these are stuff that you have to do afterwards, right? Um, you know, ensure as well as update, uh, set up the fee recipients for a valid client, um, client, you know, um, suggest a fee, set up the MVE boost. So these are things you have to do, but it's currently not uh, available until the merge happens. So I just want to let that let you guys know that. Um, so all these things are things they have to do after uh, the merge happens. So yeah, I hope this is uh, very helpful for you guys. Um, I do recommend to, right? Um, let's see. I do recommend you guys really monitor your asset stations. Um, that's pretty much the only indicator right now. Of letting you know if you've done it properly and successfully um i do hope everyone you know is able to you know upgrade their uh rocket pool node validators uh to 1.5 and they did everything appropriately um you know this is not it help or like um yeah it's not really it help that's pr that's pretty much what i want to stress um i'm just hope being that this provides some guidance to some folks because when I was doing this, I was scratching my head just a little bit. Um, and I'm pretty sure, you know, um, hopefully someone finds this very useful. Um, so yeah, if you guys like this video, um, please uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Um, I do also play video games on Twitch, so feel free to follow me on Twitch. I'll leave that in the description as well. Um, but yeah, I hope this is very helpful. Um, very excited for the Rocket Pool community. So I'll get you guys later. Juicy out.